the Biokinetic Canine Facebook Live show for today. We're starting a little bit later. Um, we've got load shedding, so what can you do? Um, we're going to be talking about how to build a quality dog exercise program today. Let me just introduce myself for those who don't know. My name is Angela Hearn. I'm a certified canine athlete specialist, and this is what I do. Um, to explain is I look at particularly sport dogs, and I design fitness programs around this sport in, in order to avoid any injuries and to get them fit and strong for the sport that they do. So let's get started. How can we put together a good quality dog exercise program? What is all involved? Let, give me just a second. Let me just go through to where we need to be. There we go. So a good a dog exercise program. This is all about the control of the exercises of your dog. So your good program must have that control. When we talk about a good quality exercise program, we're talking about um, where we have to address specific areas of exercise for your dog's needs. It's the same for humans and for, for dogs. It's exactly the same thing. We need to find out what can we do in order for your dog to achieve his goals. So when we're looking at programs for exercise and fitness and conditioning programs, we're looking at loads of variables. We're looking at um, not only how to put all of these things together, but we also have to consider your dog, the breed of your dog, the um, performance structure of your dog, not the breed structure, but the performance such structure. How is your dog built in order to do the exercise or the competition or the sport that he is doing? And then we also have to look about look at um, what strength exercises does he need for his particular sport? Does he need more front uh, front end strength, hind end strength, more balanced? These are going to be a lot of jumping, a lot of speed, a lot of power moves. Um, we're going to have to look at the cardio um, ability, the stamina for the sport, or even for working people and working dogs. We have to look at um, the stamina to do, say, for example, search and rescue. Some of these dogs need to be able to track for quite some time. They're going to work through lots of debris, etc. So you have to look at the cardio, not only just the cardio for, the, for that, uh, that job at hand, but their stamina to push through. I know the hunt point retrieve people, they need, their dogs need stamina, especially when they're going towards that end phase and they're in the final few of the dogs that are going to be pushing through. The last bit of that, that competition is, is really difficult and the dog has to be able to push through. Um, we also have to look at the flexibility of the dogs and also the, um, their balance. How can they recover when they're not a little bit off kilter? So for your IGB dogs, if they are attacking a helper or the assailant and the, the, the grass is a bit slippery, how can they readjust in their balance? Similarly, your um, agility dogs, if there's dew on the grass and they've got to make tight, uh, tight corners and they've got to land, what is their ability to recover from uh, in the flexibility in their body to recover from being off kilter and off balance? So all of these things go into a uh, fitness program. And then we also need to monitor how we progress through a fitness program. You don't just go from one week to the next and make it a little bit more difficult by increasing speed and increasing intensity. You do things in, in there's the overload principle. So you do things a little bit at a time, one section at a time, so that the body can adjust to the new extra requirements placed on it but it can adjust, uh, adjust um, safely. So all of those things go into your fitness program and you're controlling all of those various variables, but not just the variables, you're also controlling your dog's movements in the exercises. So when it comes to your sport dogs, they've got a lot of drive. So that means they've got full of energy, everything gets done fast, everything gets done with speed, especially for their competition. The dogs need to look flash. That's what the people are looking at. If the dogs are not going at full speed, it's like, uh, uh, uh. you want the dog to look flash. You want them to turn quickly and sit when you ask them to sit and stand and run and jump. Everything gets done quickly. But when it comes to building your exercise program, it's about how you control all of those various exercises in order for the technique to be accurate so that the muscle memory is there when the dog needs it at speed. So, your control of your exercises in uh, executing your, your fitness and your conditioning 
program exercises is very, very important. The control increases your speed at the end of the day. What, what's next? Let me go there. Let's have a look. So we're gonna look at never be boring. If you think about exercises, even for humans, we're gonna to go to the gym today and we're gonna be doing, let's take for example arms, you're gonna do three sets of 12 at six kilograms. You can't do that with a dog and just tell him to do sits and stands, sits and stands five times and a dog doesn't understand that this is an exercise routine. So you have to incorporate some fun into their routines. Um, mix it up a little bit. So one day we're gonna do front end awareness, the next day we're gonna do back end strength exercises and you're gonna be just doing different exercises on different days. So after a week of your program, not that you're training every day, mind you, after a week of your program, your dog has been doing different things and it's gotta be fun. Even if we gotta be slowing it down, even if, we, if we're building tension in the dog so that they do the exercises just a little bit slower so that it's more accurate. Never ever be boring. Um, you want to incorporate different muscles on different days and you wanna alternate the days and you wanna do different types of exercises. So one day you'll be doing some strength, the next day you're gonna be doing some flexibility or you're gonna be doing some flexibility and balance on one day. You're never gonna be doing um, the same routine all the time. Fitness exercises, dogs don't understand it. So you can't ask them to, you will be doing now five sets of sits downs, thank you very much. Be a little bit excited for them because this is, they're doing everything just to please you. So help them. Stretching after your goals. Stretches are really important, but when and how you do these stretches is very important. Stretching after exercises is a must. Um, and we have an article about stretching safely. There's two different kinds of exercises. The one is where the dog is stretching himself. Say, for example, if he's jumping up on your shoulders and he's stretching out his back legs, that's him stretching himself. If you are going to be taking a back leg and you're going to um, be stretching it out on holding and supporting the joint, that is where you are stretching that, that muscle. Please don't do those stretches where you are stretching the muscle before an exercise. Always do those type of stretches called passive stretches, but do them after exercises. That's really important. So your warm up and your stretching um, before exercise, very important, but then it is the dog's own stretching ability. He's gonna stretch himself, not you are not gonna stretch him. So stretches after um, exercise and after any fitness program for the day, it improves the circulation and it ensures that the oxygen gets to the right parts of the muscle and throughout the body. Um, you want to have that, you want to maintain that muscle resilience and flexibility in the muscles. So stretching after your goals, always important. What are the tools? Everybody's on about fitness tools and you get all of these um, peanuts, paw pods, the fit bone and the balance cushion. Uh, you get loads of equipment and you can use them, but they're not essential to a good fitness and conditioning program, especially if you're starting out and your dog is not super advanced. If a dog is going on to a peanut, please, if you see those videos on uh, YouTube and Facebook, those dogs are at an advanced stage already. So your tools, um, they're there to help and enhance your fitness program, and they're there to assist the dog in um, consistency and maintaining of a particular form, or going to the next level after they are solid and stable on the ground. Um, your first focus would be on the safety of the dog. So always ensure that whatever tools you're using, that their feet are going to be safe and secure. Um, so even if it's on a peanut, it's not slippery, there's no moisture on the peanut, um, their feet must be secure so that they've got a good grip and good stability on whatever tool they're using. Even in the picture you can see here, this dog is on a log and you can use what is ever in your surrounds as a tool. That is the whole point. You want to make sure that you achieve the best movement that you can with whatever tool you're using. So your tools must enhance your, your program and they must assist the dog. It mustn't be that it is unsafe for the dog to use the tool. Really, really important. Let's see. 
track and measure your progress. Um, what are we talking about here? If you're going to be doing, especially for your sport dogs, you want to have um, optimum performance. You want to be able to achieve a, a performance goal. Um, you want to have some structure and direction in what you're doing. Spontaneity in exercise and fitness exercises is all fine and well. It's loads of fun. Um, you can still have your your regular your regular fitness training um, behavior spontaneous and exciting. But you want to also track and measure to see exactly how you're progressing, where your dog is a little bit behind, where can you make things better for your dog. This is what we do. So you'll see here on the um, slide that we have a, an app that you guys would be using. And here we give you the exercises and you can monitor. We tell you exactly what to do. You tell us if it's been difficult, how you progressed. And if you are coming from a physio or a rehab, all of these reports we send onto them and say exactly how the dog is doing, where the dog is doing well, where the dog is struggling, etc. But you want to be able to track and measure your, uh, your goals and your achievements with your dog. You want to be realistic according to your sport and you want to have be realistic according to your breed, your dog's breed and his structure. So tracking and measuring, you want to look at your performance and goals. Are these goals realistic? Is it sport-specific exercises that you are uh, using? And you must consider the current fitness levels as well. So even if you're bringing a dog that is overweight and you want to lose a little bit of weight, where are you going to start with that dog? You don't want to start on a peanut. <laughs> you want to start slowly and you want the dog to enjoy what they're doing. It's not going to be like, oh, we're going to be exercising now. It's got to be fun always for the dog. So there you have it. Simple. If, if these um, points or putting uh, a fitness program together, it is overwhelming for a lot of people. If you have got to consider like, all the exercises for your sport, you don't want to have something that contradicts your sport, where the dog is now going to be uh, performing less in the area that you're requiring to him to be. You want to have all his, um, the all the components of a fitness program included, and they must also enhance the sport. You want it to be particular for your dog's build and structure, your dog's breed. So uh, there's a lot of variables that goes into drawing up a fitness program. If you are very overwhelmed, please give us a call. We're there to help you. Um, we help you design your exercise program. and We make it easy for you to track and measure your performance and to progress. So if you have any questions after this show, please pop them in the comments below. And I'll be happy to, to answer anything that you are unsure of. Um, if you want to learn more about us, you're most welcome to go to our website. Let me just get it there for you. This is what we are. And our website is thebiokineticanine.com. Pop us an email. Um, talk about how we can help you structure your dog's exercise program. We, yeah, this is what we do. I'm, this is what I've been qualified to do. And I'm here to help. And I'm here if we get the program right. Your dog is going to perform better, is going to perform for longer, is going to have a less likelihood of having an injury that it happened to my dog. You don't want to go down that road because your soft tissue injuries take so long to heal. All right. So I know we've set for load shedding tomorrow morning, but we're also going to have an excellent protection weekend this weekend. So I'm really excited about that. You guys have yourself an excellent weekend. And if there's anything you need from me, please send me a, a comment or send me an email. Have a good weekend, everybody. Cheers now.